This is the latest MacBook Pro, the 14 inch to be more specific. And here I have the one that has the M1 Pro chip and it's the base model. So it's got an eight core CPU, a 14 core GPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. I wanna do some video editing tests to see how pro this MacBook Pro is. We'll play around with a couple of projects that have Blackmagic 6K raw footage. And on top of that, I'm gonna be doing a comparison with a Windows PC that has an RTX 2060 that has six gigabytes of dedicated memory, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a Ryzen 5 5600X that has a clock speed of 3.7 gigahertz and it has six cores. It also has a terabyte SSD in it. I mean, it's not the most powerful custom build out there, but for the stuff that I usually do, for the editing that I do, it does a really good job. All projects will be done in Premiere Pro, so this may not be the best indicator for DaVinci editors and Final Cut Pro editors. We have footage that was shot on Blackmagic and it's 6K RAW at 50 frames per second. And to see if it's gonna drop any frames when we play it in full quality playback resolution. The PC dropped 10 frames and the MacBook Pro dropped 347. That's a big difference. Blackmagic 6K RAW files are so heavy. This is to be expected, but I'm impressed that it's actually playing it back. It's, it's not just dying or exploding because this is a heavy file to play back. If you don't actually understand what's happening here with frames, when you're playing back your footage and if the computer that you're using doesn't have enough capacity to process each frame or each effect that's within those frames, it will just drop them and not actually process them. Okay, so now we're gonna keep it full quality on both machines. We've color graded the footage. Now we're putting text on top. This is usually what people will do if they're editing footage. I already did this off camera just to save time. The windows dropped 106 frames and the MacBook Pro dropped 472 frames. Even though the Windows was better, my expectation would have been that this would not even play. And the fans are not even on yet. I can't even hear them. The older MacBook Pro base models before the M1 chips would have never played the 6K raw footage this well. Even though it's dropping frames, I mean, you can go down to half quality playback. Most people are actually editing in 4K because not a lot of people are actually gonna shoot 6K or render out 6K. Some people are just making content or videos just for social media. So let's say you're making content for Instagram. Instagram doesn't even take 4K footage. It still will compress it down. Actually, let's load up an HD vlog that I edited the other day. And you will see I have zero drop frames most of the time when I'm editing HD footage. Quite a lot happening and different files and I've color graded here, put some looks on top. I have some graphics on top, some text, and it plays pretty well, nothing. This is at half quality, let me put it at full. And you'll see that they actually you no know, dropped frames, zero. So if you are someone who's editing HD footage and you're editing vlogs, even if they're this hectic in terms of your timeline, you can be sure that you can edit at full playback. Let's open a project that I did with 4K footage from a Sony a6400. It's not the most heavy 4K you're ever gonna edit. You have footage, you have color grading, you have a bit of uh, animation going in there, graphics. And I use some effects like Warp Stabilizer on some of the shots. So there's enough in this project to really give the computer a bit of work to do. So let's see how it does. Zero drop frames. And, you know, I put a lens flare effect there. I see it dropped a frame because here we have about four different stacks of 4K footage on top of each other. And I mean, it dropped a couple of frames, but it didn't actually stop playing back. And then we have some, you know, graphics coming up here. Um, so it dropped 24 frames, which honestly I'm okay with. 
and it depends with you and depends with what you actually do on a daily basis if you're editing movies this computer is not for you it's just too small to begin with but if you're doing stuff like this which is something that i do on the go you can edit these kind of videos and you won't experience the lag or you won't feel like your computer is going to blow up there's one more test that i want to do which is something that i usually use as a measure to see how fast or how productive a computer is because it's an effect that I use a lot, which is Warp Stabilizer. And I know a lot of Premiere Pro editors use Warp Stabilizer. I want to see how fast the MacBook Pro can stabilize one of the 6K clips compared to the Windows PC. Wow, this is so confusing. The Windows took a minute, 15 seconds, so longer than the MacBook Pro to stabilize the same shot with the same number of frames. This is why I actually don't do benchmarks First of all, purely because I don't understand them. I use computers daily, trust me. I'm an editor, so I need the most powerful machines. I usually look for something that gives me real life experience, like real life results, productivity in the stuff that I actually do. And it's in these situations where I'm like, the MacBook is better. I mean, it's not a significant amount of time. It's just like 10 seconds or so faster, but that means that I can actually get this and make it my main computer. So you can be sure that if you were to get the bigger brothers of this MacBook, so the ones that have uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM or 64 even, and the ones that have a 10 core CPU, you'll be sure to get even better results, like way better than the ones that you're getting. I'm definitely sold. I would really recommend this computer to people who do exactly things that I do. I've been using it quite a lot in the past few days and it's just been doing so well. I don't work with Blackmagic 6K raw footage every day. I'm mostly working with 4K footage. It's just been editing smoothly and I've been using it with other applications as well with Lightroom, Photoshop, After Effects even. If I can be productive on something that is this small but most importantly something that i can carry around it's a winner for me for you to maximize your time and be able to work on the go you can't be carrying your custom built pc with you this is a base model there's nothing that's been added here it's just literally the cheapest macbook pro you can get from 2021 i hope this video was helpful and i hope it gave you a little bit of insight on what to expect. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments down below. And if you enjoy the content of this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. Apart from that, until next time.